Hello everyone, this is Dr. Posta. Welcome to my medical video podcast series. Today's topic is rheumatoid arthritis. If you are planning to take USMLE, UKMLA, PLAB or MRCP, then this podcast series may be helpful to you. Please hit the subscribe button and bell icon to support me. So let's get into today's topic. We all know rheumatoid arthritis is a disease of joints. It is a chronic autoimmune disorder that causes inflammation in the joints and surrounding tissue. The immune system attacks the joints causing swelling, stiffness and pain. Rheumatoid arthritis is characterized by a symmetrical deforming peripheral polyarthritis. The most commonly involved joints are these joints, I mean the proximal interphalangeal joints, the distal interphalangeal joints and metacarpophalangeal joints of the hands. It can also affect the toes. Occasionally, it can affect ankle joint, knee joint and wrist joint. But the common scenarios we see in the exam hall are typically the small joints involvement of both hands. Rheumatoid arthritis can also cause inflammation in other parts of the body such as lungs, heart and blood vessels. In the lungs it may cause nodules, pruritis, pleural effusion and lung fibrosis that might be due to the disease process itself or due to methotrexate. In the heart it causes amyloid cardiomyopathy which is a form of restrictive cardiomyopathy. It also causes pericarditis. Finally, for the blood vessels, it may cause different types of vasculitis. The severity of rheumatoid arthritis can vary widely from person to person. It can range from a mild disease to a severe disabling condition. It is more common in women than in men and usually appears in the middle age, although it can occur at any age. We know most of the autoimmune diseases are more common in females than males. There is no known cure for rheumatoid arthritis, but it can be managed with medication and lifestyle changes. Most of the autoimmune diseases cannot be cured because the disease process is itself linked with our immune system. Our immune system is attacking our body. For the case of rheumatoid arthritis, it is attacking our joints. We cannot fully suppress our immune system because that would make us more susceptible to infection and we would die. That's why these type of diseases cannot be cured but can be controlled. This podcast is sponsored by Costa Medi. If you are a medical person and you are willing to perform a medical research but you don't know much about statistical analysis and result writing, then Costa Medic has a course for you which is called SPSS Data Analysis and Result Writing course for beginners. You don't need to have any prior knowledge of biostatistics or statistics software to start this course. At the end of this course, you would be competent enough to do data analysis for your future medical research projects. The first video is free and unlocked, so please go and watch it. The link to this course is given in the description box. Now a little about the epidemiology of rheumatoid arthritis. RA is more common in developed countries than in developing countries. It is also more common in people of certain ethnicities such as Caucasians and in people with a family history of the disease which means it has a genetic component. Prevalence rate in the UK is 1% but worldwide it is around 0.5 to 1%. Female to male ratio is 3 is to 1 and it is associated with HLA-DR4, especially for Felty syndrome. Now the question arises, what is Felty syndrome? Felty syndrome is a rare autoimmune disorder that is characterized by rheumatoid arthritis an enlarged spleen and a low white blood cell count or neutropenia. That means you have to get a triad of rheumatoid arthritis, enlarged spleen and neutropenia to diagnose a person with Felty syndrome. It is a complication of rheumatoid arthritis that occurs in about 1% of the people with RA. Felty syndrome occurs mostly in males and the treatment of Felty syndrome is 
same as the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis itself which means we must give immunosuppressive therapies in the form of steroid, methotrexate, DMARD, TNF alpha inhibitors. Some common clinical features of RA are joint pain, swelling and stiffness. RA typically affects the joints of the hands, wrists, feet, ankles and knees. The joints may be swollen, tender to touch and painful when moved. Stiffness is often worse in the morning or after a period of inactivity. That's why we always ask patients during the history taking process about the morning stiffness and most of the patients tell us that they have morning stiffness of 30 minutes or more. Fatigue is also a common feature of rheumatoid arthritis. Loss of functions of the involved joints are also common because the joints become deformed and at the end stage when arthritis mutilence happens the joints become weak and unstable certain day-to-day -day activities like combing the hair unbuttoning the shirt bathing and eating can be hampered RA can also cause other symptoms like fever loss of appetite and weight loss it can also cause inflammation in the other parts of the body such as eyes kidneys lungs and heart in the eyes, keratoconjunctivitis sicca is the commonest manifestation. In the kidneys, it may cause amyloid kidney disease. I have already told you what it can cause in the lungs and heart. Symptoms of RA can come and go with periods of flare-ups followed by periods of remission. The severity of the RA can vary widely from person to person and it can range from a mild disease to a severe disabling condition. So when someone has flare-up of chronic rheumatoid arthritis, we typically increase the dose of the medicines which he or she is already taking or we add some other medicine to his or her medicine regimen. Extra-articular manifestations can happen in 40% of RA patients. Nodules can be seen in the elbows, in the lungs. Nodules are also common over the dorsal aspect of the hand and around the ankle joints. In the lungs, it can cause pleural disease like pleural effusion, interstitial fibrosis, bronchiolitis obliterans and organizing pneumonia. In heart, it can cause IHT, constrictive pericarditis and pericardial effusion. In nerves, it can cause carpal tunnel syndrome. We know carpal tunnel syndrome occurs due to the entrapment or pressure over the median nerve, it is linked to the amyloidosis caused by rheumatoid arthritis. And next, it can also cause peripheral neuropathy and splenomegaly, which is associated with Felty syndrome. In the eye, it causes episcleritis, scleritis, scleromalacia, keratoconjunctivitis, sicca, which is the most common manifestation and steroid induced cataract because many of the chronic rheumatoid arthritis patients take steroid for long time. So they can also develop all the side effects of the steroid that may not be limited to the eyes only. They can also develop Cushing syndrome due to steroid. Some of the other manifestations can be osteoporosis, amyloidosis, depression, lymphadenopathy and vasculitis. Kaplan syndrome is also associated with rheumatoid arthritis. It means RA plus massive fibrotic nodules with pneumoconiosis due to occupational coal dust exposure. So it happens to those people who are exposed to coal dust. These are some relevant images. The first image is showing you the botonier deformity and swan neck deformity and the second one is showing you the ulnar deviation of the wrists the third image is showing you the z deformity of the thumb and the fourth image is showing you a rheumatoid nodule around the elbow region this image is showing you the arthritis mutilens the small hand joints of this poor guy is almost completely destroyed this guy would have difficulty to do his day-to-day -day work Genetic factor is very important. There are certain environmental factors as well like smoking, silica exposure, hormonal factors and red meat. We always give smoking cessation advice to a RA patient and 
Hormonal factors are thought to be an environmental factor because higher percentage of females develop rheumatoid arthritis. So there are certain hypotheses about the hormonal factors in females. Damage is mediated by several means including macrophages activated by CD4 T cells and by complement fixing immune complexes. Macrophages also secretes tumor necrotic factor and this TNF secreted by macrophages are key in pathology. TNF is a pro-inflammatory cytokine with multiple roles in the immune system. That's why we use TNF blockers like infliximab, adalimumab and etanercept to treat rheumatoid arthritis. A number of studies have suggested a link between proteus mirabilis infection and the development of RA in susceptible individuals. And this may contribute to the increased incidence of RA in women who are more susceptible to UTI. Now the question arises, what is rheumatoid factor? Rheumatoid factor is a circulating antibody. Usually it is IgM type. It reacts with the FC portion of patient's own IgG. RF is positive in 70 to 80% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. That means we can have patients of rheumatoid arthritis who are seronegative or who do not have RF. A positive rheumatoid factor can be associated with more severe erosive disease, extraarticular manifestations including subcutaneous nodules and increased mortality. Other conditions associated with positive RF includes Sjogren syndrome, Felty syndrome, infective endocarditis, mixed cryoglobulinemia, SLE, systemic sclerosis, polymyositis or dermatomyositis. Sometimes general people can also have rheumatoid factor in their blood and rarely TB, hepatitis B virus, infection, HIV, EBV, leprosy, syphilis and brucellosis can also cause RF. It is important to know that Sjogren syndrome and Felty syndrome patients almost always have positive rheumatoid factor. There is another antibody, we call it anti-CCP antibody or anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies. Anti-CCP antibodies are associated with RA. It is highly specific, more specific than RF. Anti-CCP antibody may be detectable up to 10 years before the development of rheumatoid arthritis. It may therefore play a role in the future of rheumatoid arthritis allowing early detection of the patient suitable for aggressive anti-TNF therapy. It has sensitivity similar to rheumatoid factor with a much higher specificity of 90 to 95%. NICE recommends that patients with suspected RA with RF negative should be tested for anti-CCP antibodies. Now the question is how to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis. At first we need to take the full history of the patient. The provider will ask about the patient's symptoms when they started and any other medical conditions or risk factors of rheumatoid arthritis. We must also ask about any of the extra articular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis. Then we would perform a physical examination and the provider will look for signs of swelling, tenderness and deformity of the joints. We also test for the functional status of the patient. We tell the patient to hold a pen, write something, unburden the shirt and pick up a coin. If the patient can do all this, then we can understand that the functional status is good. Then we can order some laboratory investigations like blood tests such as ESR, CRP, RF, etc. And we can obtain imaging studies like X-ray, MRI and ultrasound can also visualize the inside of the joints as is the extent of joint damage. This is a point system to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis if someone has six or more points out of 10, then he or she would definitely have rheumatoid arthritis. I personally find it very difficult to memorize. If you can do it, do it. There are certain extra changes associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Typical early extra findings are periarticular osteopenia and osteoporosis, periarticular decalcification, 
loss of joint space and soft tissue swelling. In later stage, we can see periarticular erosions and subluxation. Now, how do we treat rheumatoid arthritis? Patient with evidence of joint inflammation should start a combination of DMART as soon as possible. Other important treatment options include analgesia, physiotherapy, and surgery. Initial therapy in NICE guidelines, it is recommended that patients with newly diagnosed active RA start a combination of DMART, including methotrexate and at least one other DMART plus short term glucocorticoids. So, an example can be methotrexate plus sulfasalazine plus short course of prednisolone. The common DMRDs are methotrexate, sulfasalazine, leflunomide, and hydroxychloroquine. Methotrexate is most commonly used. These medications have their own pros and cons. So, we should use our merit to prescribe these medications. For example, for a pregnant woman, methotrexate may not be a suitable option. In that case, sulfasalazine or leflunomide may be more safer. Some anti DNF alpha agents can also be used to treat RA. These are etanercept, infliximab, and adalimumab. There is another medication called toclizumab, which is anti IL 6 receptor. Rituximab is also useful. It is an anti CD20 monoclonal antibody, results in B cell depletion. The most common side effects of rituximab are allergic reactions, flu-like symptoms, and tumor pain. Rituximab can be used in other conditions like non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, pure red cell aplasia, ITP Evan syndrome, multiple sclerosis, SLE, and vasculitis. Abatacept is also an option to treat RA, but it is not currently recommended by NICE. It is a cytotoxic T lymphocyte antigen 4 homologue. In certain conditions, TNA blockers are contraindicated. The most common condition is active TB in pregnancy and in breastfeeding. We always test for tuberculosis in a patient by chest X-ray, gene expert or other tests before prescribing TNF blockers. TNF blockers are also contraindicated in active infection, multiple sclerosis, heart failure, NYHA grade 3 to 4. TNF inhibitors should be stopped 2 to 4 weeks before any major operation. Stopping earlier may lead to disease flare and thus interfere with surgery. Treatment may be restarted postoperatively if there is no evidence of infection. Some of the poor prognostic features of RA are rheumatoid factor positive, anti CCP antibodies, HLA DR4, insidious onset, poor functional status at presentation. X-ray early articular erosions, extra articular features like nodules and female sex. This ends rheumatoid arthritis podcast. If you would like to download the PowerPoint presentation shown in this podcast, then the download link is given in the description box. Please hit the subscribe button and bell icon to support me.